you know that when uh, a scientist finds a new species, they become very excited? If they find a fish, if they find an insect, if they find a salamander that nobody has ever seen before, they start getting very exciting, excited and writing it down. They put it in scientific journals. They want everybody to read about it. But here we have an entirely new race of human beings. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The world has never seen anything like the Christians. Now, for some reason, the world doesn't like this. If we find a new species of insect, boy, we're excited about that. But here we have people who are brand new in Christ Jesus. Born of an incorruptible seed. And nobody is interested. Well, somebody's interested. You know who's interested? God is interested. God longed for this species of human being ever since Adam fell. For 4,000 years, he endured the sins and the attitudes of man. Until he sent his only son who died on the cross. So that when he arose from the dead, there would finally be a man who could walk about in the image and in the likeness of the Father. And so Dan was saying uh, that we need to start thinking about this just a little bit differently. Uh, and I want to read a verse in, uh, or a section in Ephesians chapter 1. Dan was talking about thinking spiritually, being spiritually minded. I'm going to express it this way from the scripture. The eyes of our understanding need to be opened. Who can help me with the scripture? Who's going to read? Yes. Okay. Ephesians 1. One. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. I want you to read. Ephesians 1. Verse 1. I want you to read starting in verse 17. And go ahead and read it to the end of the chapter. To the end of the chapter. Matina, you have a chill, Matina Parco Rabirio, Wachonia, Ka Aquayo, Ka Aquayo Woro, Bogul Duong. Am I there? Ka Aquayo Woro, Bogul Duong Duto, no man is a true day so Christo, Mondo Omiu Roho, Mondo Miu Roho, Makelunu Riaco, Kedofenu Git Moko, Mondo Unge. Akwayo ni chunyu oyaure mondo unge gima ugeno mose luongwe. Kendo unge kaka gwithuno mose singore ni no mi joge ogondo. Bende mondo unge teko maduong matiyo kuomwa wanjoma uye kuome. Mano e teko maduong mane utiogo mane utiogo kuchiro wode kristo wa kumjoma otho. Mi uketo ibade makura chuiche polo. Kristo nigiloch Kuno, kum rudi mag polo duto, inukum tetu kum teko duto giloch duto, giduong duto kodi nying 
moro amora minyalo duongi ok e piny ni kende to e piny mabiro bende nyasaye no keto gik moko duto e teko kristo kendo no miyo kristo bedo e wi kanisa ma en kanyakla mar ji duto moyie kuom kristo kanyakla mar jo moyie kuom kristo en ringruok en ringruok kristo kendo ka ringruok oriwore gi wich to jal ma miyo gik moko duto chopo kare bende chopo kare kare en owuon Paul's talking about that we need to be given a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Dan was talking about the revelation of Peter that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. It's not enough for Peter to have that revelation. You have to have that revelation. I have to have that revelation. We both need a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Paul's praying that God would open up the eyes of their understanding about the Ephesians. This needs to be something we do for each other. Sometimes it's good just to sit down and look at the prayers of the scripture. Because if we pray these same things for ourselves, we will never be the same again. You need to know what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance or his inheritance in the saints. You know what that means? It means the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ has an inheritance in you and me. Listen, we can be the worst of people. We can be as earthly a, a lot as Christians can be. But we cannot underestimate what God sees in us. Amen. What God wants in us. If we start thinking of ourselves in the same way that God thinks about us, we will start think of, thinking of ourselves correctly for the first time. God has certain thoughts about the saints. He has certain intents and purposes for us. Whenever we take our own thoughts and our own purposes and make that our way, it actually can be pretty insulting to the Lord Jesus Christ. But Paul is saying that Paul God has an inheritance in you and me. And that that inheritance is according to the working of his mighty power. To us that believe, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him up. Yeah. He set him up high in the heavenly places. Mm. Do you know that that same power, not a power like it, but that same power works in us. That same power works yes. in us. Amen. Let's not sell that power short. And when he set him up there, far above principalities and powers, far above mights and dominions, far above every name that is named, in this world and in the worlds to come. And he set us there with him. Talk about the 
about a new species of man. A great working of God in us. And it says you put all things under his feet. To be the head over all things in the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him which fills all in all. The church is the body of Christ on earth. Jesus Christ, through whom and for whom all things are created, yes. is the one that fills all in all. And the church is the fullness of the one, the one that fills. I'm going to take a breath. God has done something for us that uh, no man can, can wrap his arms around it. Yes. He's doing some he's done something which is great and marvelous and, and higher than we could possibly ask or think. Now, unfortunately, most of the church, most of the people that call themselves by the name of Christ, don't think of themselves in this way. If you ask them what they are here for, they may give you a, a, a lot of different answers. Uh, they may say, I'm waiting for God to take me away to heaven. Where everything's going to be wonderful. And in the meantime, he's going to bless me here on earth. And then we forget that God has something that he wants to do in us and through us here on the earth. And it's concerning those purposes that we are here this weekend. Hmm. We want to know what he wants of us. Yes. Because you know what? If he wants it, there's going to be a people who will give it to him. Yes. If God wants something in a people, he is going to have a people who do what he wants. And become what he wants. Hallelujah. Now, I, I like it when uh, people take notes. Um, What is the purpose in your life? 
What is at stake here is whether or not we fulfill all of God's purposes in life. Now, uh, you know that what it's talking about were the sons of Israel once they were delivered from Egypt. Uh, and they were at the bank of the um, of the Red Sea. They couldn't cross the Red Sea. They were being pursued by the Egyptian army. And they had no place to go. And God worked a wonderful and divine deliverance in their midst. Moses told them, stand still and see the salvation of your God. Yes. I think they had to do that by faith. Because what they really wanted to do was run. He had Moses lift up his rod over the Red Sea. Look, every Red Sea. And the Red Sea parted. And they were able to go over on dry land. And then we know the rest of the story the Red Sea drowned their enemies. You understand what happened there? They were delivered from their enemies. Their enemies could no longer pursue them. They were no longer in danger. And they were taken out into the wilderness. And it says here that they were all baptized unto Moses in the clouds and in the sea. Now, in the sea, of course, speaks of water baptism. Uh, where it says, we, in, in water baptism, we are buried with him in death. And then we arrive in newness of life. But they were also baptized in the cloud. The cloud was the presence of the very Spirit of God. So they were not only baptized in water, uh, but it's talking about a baptism which was really like the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so, all of a sudden, they find themselves in the wilderness with uh, a baptism of water that has delivered them from their enemies. And a spirit baptism which will lead them into something that they need to be doing.
unfortunate part of the story. In verse 5 it says, but many of them, with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Yes, that's a hard thing to take in. They were being provided for. They had manna from heaven. They drank water from the rock. The rock followed them and the rock was Christ. And yet they never really fulfilled the purpose that God brought them out of Egypt for. That is the sad part. Because God didn't bring them out of Egypt so that they could be just delivered from their enemies. He brought them out of Egypt so that they could go and take a kingdom. Another man said it to me this way. He brought us out to bring us in. Now they were in the wilderness to prepare for this. And in the wilderness they were tested. They failed the test. Because although God delivered them from Egypt, they would not allow God to deliver the desire for Egypt out of them. So everything that happened, they longed to go back. The first time they saw a skirmish of battle, they wanted to go back into Egypt. God is uh, God uh, allowed them to drink water from the rock. Whenever they got thirsty, they wanted to go back to Egypt. God fed them in the wilderness. Yes. But they said, we are tired of this bread. Yes. And they longed for the leeks and the onions that were in Egypt. Now, when they got to the Red Sea, excuse me, when they got to the Jordan River, um, they sent spies over. And the spies came back with a mixed report. I won't go through all the scriptures. They said, the spies did, that the land was an exceedingly great land. It was a land filled with milk and honey. But there were giants in the land. Uh, before whom we were like grasshoppers. And we can't go and take that land. And much of the church is in the mode of failure. 
kanithi mangeni kawuno nitie mana jogo madok chien kendo gin jo kanithi mapiny now i'm going to be talking about actually going in to the promised land i don't want to go be a pain in my offing but i want to make uh, one one thing uh, clear about the purposes of god i don't get the moro makara i don't get the maneno rera tiro duaro marinya sai we do not choose the purposes of god for ourselves one of a year duaro marinya sai e gimama it is god that chooses who we shall be when you die in a year into one more group in your mother It's God who equips us to become who we need to be. Now that I am not so I'm going to be the job of money go be no be hallelujah. It's the mighty power of God which is toward us to raise us up to be with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Can you go and go on and say you take me say my thing on go be the chill the Christ Jesus we be good boy. There is absolutely no reason we need to stop anywhere along the way. Can you go on get the more more when you want go go to be come you be no be. If we do you can say God is not well pleased with us. Kero kono kopo ni wa wa tamre na wa mungu ki konda na kopo chopo but in the sai of the bible more kodo and can be chill. I want to be clear these are saved people. And gino madona wat molli morri ere kabisa. But Paul talked about being saved so as by fire. To kuro Paulo watu ni ki wa kitu wa wa kalo e match. They didn't fulfill what God wanted for them. To na ko chopo kare ki menya sani wono ki tim. So they had actually nothing to take with them into the 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 next age into the next uh, state of our being with God. Can you call on get gino man again you think you get big way thing my chelo can I get big your can my chelo man you say go and get it. They are saved as by fire. Ne all according no war get the match. And this is the age of fire. To ma and o tien tien mar match. This age will end with violent fire. Then you know tiny biro rumo duto ko kala ko matmade that will consume the heavens and the earth. Then you know imagine biro keto pologi pinte o pro wa pologi pin. But we'll do more than that. To opro timo mo kala kanyo. It will reveal to us the new heavens and the new earth. O pro fuenu no pin mo nyen di polo mo nyen. Hallelujah. Now I want to be clear about the new heavens and the new earth. Ha we want to watch na tiro ma abel ma lai ko mo polo mo nyen di pin mo nyen. You're meant to be people who live on earth. The unjo go mon no se mon odagi e pin. But not as you are right now. To akata un sani. To have a body that is glorious. Ni kin go bin gi ngima kata frigru go kuma ni ni di doom. Uh to be able to uh do things without being cursed the way the earth is cursed right now. Ni kin mon wa bin ni wa nyalo timo gi kuma ko ma ko kuma ka ka pin kuma ni sani. Everything people like about heaven that they don't understand. Give more give my dear Iro a polo ma beo ka di o yo ka di ne ku ngi. Is true even more so. Ne again I did it to mo loyo because Paul says that eye has not seen and ear has not heard neither has come into the heart of man what God has created for those that love him. Ne ke no pagulo ka ni wa ko ko ne no ipo ko windo paro po ko paro ka ka be po ki biro e tuni da no Digo manya sai o kan re jogo mi ku me. But in the meantime we're not just waiting for that. So I said that you open up and you open up and pay on day and you are to say that you're going to be. We've been given a great charge and a great purpose. O se me wa dino ma lit mo ni go be no ti. We'll be talking about the purposes of God in a number of ways. Wa pro we ko do manya sai e yo re ko ro ko re. But right now we're talking about taking a kingdom. To sai ni wo ko ka o pay ni mo sa sengi cha. I want to pick up the story story 40 years later. Joshua chapter 3 Joshua mati madongo a bitch adek I'm just going to read a few verses and um and comment uh we won't read the whole thing Wait I just want to mati no kwaso mete I'm going to read brother verse 1 It's almost kare cho It says and Joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over Bokini mangi Joshua na ko Joisa duto no wok Shittim migi di nyaka aura Jordan ne gi boro kanyo kapok gingado kapok gingado aura Now Joshua was the leader who was chosen by God to follow Moses Kero koro Joshua ne entetelo mano yer gi nyasai mondo olu Musa and to lead his people over that river. 
There are some two to three million people we're talking about. There were a million men of fighting age. Then there were also the women and children. And they were all on the uh, eastern bank of the Jordan River waiting to go over. This is the people that had known failure. This is the people that saw the previous generation fail and fall in the wilderness. They knew the results of that failure. And now there's three million of them. They're on the bank of the Jordan River. And the Jordan River was in flood state. And it says Joshua rose early in the morning. That's what a true leader would do, you know. When it says he rose early in the morning, it says he didn't have anything else to do that day. The first thing he was going to do, and the only thing he was going to do, was be about God's business. We saw the same thing with Abraham when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac. Uh, God said to Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son whom you love. And I want you to sacrifice him to me on one of the mountains of Moriah. He was saying, you only have one son. You love that son. That's the son I want you to sacrifice. And we see the heart of Abraham. Abraham. Abraham rose up early in the morning. To make the journey and to sacrifice his son. And he was called the friend of God. God is looking for people who will set aside other things. I don't care what else is going on. There should be one priority in our life. We can fit in other things and we have to. But we will never do those other things and fit God in. God has to be all in all. You know, he, but he, it was said he was going to send uh, to us the Holy Ghost. He would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We forget about that fire part. Uh, and we forget that what God is within us is a consuming fire against everything that cannot stand in his presence. Joshua rose early in the morning. And he sent some messengers out throughout the camp. It says in verse 3, they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Verse 3. And now verse 4. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which he must go, for you have not passed this way before. 
ni maria ndipo kubiro koni tukikusuru machiedi ni kode we uru tuolo madirom ondamo alofachia now the people of israel were in a time of transition they were ready to cross over into the land and take that kingdom for their God. And that kingdom was also to be their inheritance. And Joshua was telling the people, you haven't been this way before. You've wandered around 40 mountains or so out in the wilderness. But this way is new. And nothing you have gone through is prepared you for what you are about to experience. And he says, you need to understand and see where you are going. And therefore he said, I want you to keep your eyes on the ark. Keep your eyes on the ark. What did he mean? Do you know that the, uh, the ark of God was the presence of the living God among his people. The ark was always meant to be carried about on the shoulders of men. The ark was always meant to be carried on the shoulders of men. It was the priest who carried it. You know, we are called to be kings and priests in our kingdom. We are called to be those who carry the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are told that God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. Yes. We need you to look upon the person Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I woro. Hallelujah. Now, there's a couple more things I just want to mention on this. One is that those Levites that bore the, the ark into the river. That river uh, actually does represent a certain death. It's not our physical dying that that river represents. Uh, but it represents the, the dying of anything within us. That wants to go back into Egypt and into other purposes. I'll tell you why that's true in a minute. But think about the Levites. They were men who were walking into death. That's what it showed. They were walking into the cold river Jordan in the flood stage. And they were to carry the ark to the middle of the river. And there they were going to wait while three million people walked past them. Glory to God. And the wonderful thing about these men is that nobody is looking at them. Joshua didn't say, look at me. He didn't say, look at the priest that bore the ark. He said, look at the ark itself. The presence of God. Now, one, uh, one man, a spiritual father that, uh, that, uh, uh, that both Dan and I uh, have, he asked the question. No, pejo, pejo. Nito, Euganda Mwadakeni, Erejo Lawi, Masani Kuru Wijure, Modu Muting Sandugu Muma, Maria Sai. And will bear, will get so close that they can bear the presence of the living God. Jongo Mabru Tingo, Machigni, Pie, Maria Sai. Through a time of transition and death. Nikechma Kinde, Makurogi Kyokang Machelo, Kawakala Po. And then nobody even remembers who they were. That's the kind of man and woman that God is looking for. God is looking for that in you and in me. Now there was something that was distinctly different about this parting from the previous parting. This is not the first time that the people, uh, some of them, had actually seen the part of the, the parting of the water before. The parting. This is not the first time that, that some of them had actually seen the water part. Yes. Ma o kuni ching mopongo majogi no ne noe aura kobaro rederio. Some of them were alive at the time that the Red Sea was parted. And sometimes we think that when we run, on, run across a situation that's so similar to something that happened to us before, that God will do the same thing again. I'm here to tell you something. God never does the same thing twice. I can go through scripture after scripture to demonstrate that. Well, just because waters were parting doesn't mean that God 
was doing the same thing. The last time the waters of the Red Sea were parted, God was delivering them from their enemies. Now the waters of the Jordan are being parted. And God is bringing them into the presence of their enemies. When the waters of the Red Sea came back together, they were safe from their enemies. But when the waters of the Jordan came Came back. That cut off their own retreat. This was a real leap of faith. They were going into a place that the only way they were going to survive was to defeat the enemy. Uh, listen, we have all seen uh, the failure of previous generations. Uh, of previous men. We've all experienced failure in our life. And failure is very important. There's much to be learned from failure. But once they had been delivered uh, to the presence of their enemies, and once the waters of the, 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 um, uh, the river had closed back and in, and in the flood stage. All of a sudden, failure does not seem like an option. Uh, brothers and sisters, we're in the presence of our enemies. Do you know that although you cannot see them, they can see you? Do you understand that? They can see you. But one of the wonderful things about this age is that at this age, God is using the church to show forth the, magnif the, uh, the manifold wisdom of God to principalities and powers in heavenly places. There's nothing like having a bullseye on your back. Dan and I were aware coming over here that the enemy wanted to throw many things in our way. We've got nothing to offer. I can think of plenty of people who can say these things better than Dan can or I can. Uh, and yet God has sent us part of it is that we might show forth the manifold wisdom of God there's nothing special about you except that God has chosen you for his purposes. That's why I ask you, am I speaking to the people of God? Are you willing to be on the front line? Are you willing to allow God to do things through you that you don't think are possible? 
Hebrew yile nyasai mundu tikodi Otimkodi tijemu wako maidi uonte wacho ni nyasai Ama geo kanyawo Haito bange Ibropo kasa moro We will gigit mwone ngobe ni temo I'm just gonna go back to Ephesians 1 For just one moment Ado mna somu ndiko mwako matini Ejo Efeso Kaito Bende wati ipo kikanyo Lewa chako kana wa uweo kum wenge wa mawane nogo kod kitu winyo manya sayo miyo. Iti ringi mupo do mange manya sayo niko kituwalo kitoko mbo mbo mi o elde joge. Mano sani kura onge kipulu maru uwe. But what he wants us to do is understand things that other people do not understand. Doki manya sayi doro mwondo mwange ninya sayi ome wafwe kata wange giku mwako machi mange nyo kunge ujo wete. So that we'll know how God values us. Be unya lo neno yu manya sayi okawa wago makende kata yu manya sayi doro tigo kodwa. So that we'll know how we can be the inheritance of God himself. Mwondo mi wakete mwondo meno mi wapeti jogo mapedo yo chamki kendi makipinyiru wode mwijore. And so that we can show forth what in this age has not been shown forth very much. Ni kare, epulo mawantire ni katiti mawadake ni kare mangen popo faini wa kare. The church Kanisa will be his body. Kanisa kuro enrigre mar Christo. The fullness of him that fills all in all. Enrigre mar Christo mose geher kuru kuni duto te mawa yu derigre wa. I want to thank you for listening this afternoon. Ako niro kamaru kumu video uweche mase uwege. Amen. Maiko nyasayo kwebo. Ya wapami ya nyasatu. Praise the name of the Lord.